Well, today we are talking about a new initiative that was recently launched by Redeeming Our Communities and Welcome Church called Finding the Peace. And I'm here with Deborah Green, OBE, the founder and director of Redeeming Our Communities, uh, who's tell, here to tell us all about it. Hello, Deborah. How are you? Hi, Nathan. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, it's great to have you joining me. Uh, and uh, really interested in hearing about this uh, new initiative because it's launched um, basically as a response to a lot of the uh, unrest we've seen here in the UK, isn't it? Lots of the riots. Yes. Yes. So going back to around about the 29th of July, when the awful events unfolded in Southport and um, children lost their lives to uh, victims of knife crime, um, we then unfortunately saw on top of that tragedy, um, the far right and others got involved with rioting and disorder and unrest in that community and then that seemed to spill over into many other communities as well so what we've uh, what we've really seen is the worst rioting um violence and disorder since 2011 um it's affected more than 40 different communities across the UK and we as redeeming our communities we felt that we should respond to this and as we were just thinking that through, our friends at Welcome Churches um, got in contact with us and said, how, it, how would it look like if the two charities got together and formed a collaboration? It's always better when you're working with others. You can achieve far more when two charities work together. And they came together with us to offer to the communities that have been most affected um, by the riots, um, we could come alongside those communities and do a whole host of events, which I can which I can tell you about. But as we started talking, stewardship services also uh, became partners with us and offered to work alongside us in the launch of this campaign, Finding the Peace. So the logo was quickly designed last week. We um, also then uh, launched the campaign and we started to um, hear about what communities are going through and started to quickly put together a whole list of activities for, um, for, for what we can do together to heal and restore communities. Awesome. So uh, I see that uh, you've seen a need. And uh, you've collaborated with a number of uh, charities to to meet that need and to, to support communities, which is great. And would you mind telling us a little bit, um, just for those who might not know, what is uh, Redeeming Our Communities all about? Well, Redeeming Our Communities, we are a community engagement charity uh, because unfortunately, um, people coming together to collaborate doesn't just happen naturally. You have to be intentional about it. You have to you have to physically gather to what you and uh, help them to listen and help them to get to know one another. And we've done three hundred of the rock conversations across the UK in lots of different types of communities. We were in near Derby City Centre just recently doing a rock conversation. And in the room, people are saying things like, well, we've never met. Uh, I've heard about this new initiative, um, Men in Sheds, say, for example, but we've never met them before. So what's happening is people are not really getting to know one another and they're not really sharing or collaborating across ideas. So we do that. We do that in lots of different communities. And we also then have developed some mentoring projects We've got a restorative justice project. We've got uh, health crisis and um, mental health hubs that are starting up in lots of different communities. So new ideas have emerged as we've been bringing communities together. Well, wow, that's uh, amazing. And I see, I guess, Finding the Peace is just one of many initiatives that you've launched to help bring communities together. Um, I mean, as you say, it's not easy, is it, trying to bring communities together? It's easy enough to launch a project, but how do you get people to, to get involved? How do you make it, uh, how do you get people to collaborate? That's quite tricky, isn't it? Well, when people start to share a concern, um, 
like, for example, the riots, um, it's really brought people out in solidarity. People don't want those kinds of, most people don't want those kinds of things happening in our communities where property is being destroyed through to the loss of life and many, many police officers have been injured. That is just such a negative thing to be happening in any community with violence and hatred towards different people groups. Um, so we do feel that bringing communities together is even more important. And one of the things we want to do is finding the peace initiative is to launch some listening exercises within our communities so that we can listen to maybe why people feel disenfranchised, but we're going to do it in a constructive way rather than rioting. Um, we also want to launch some friendship festivals so that we can promote um, people being friendly towards one another and showing friendship towards people that come from a different background to ourselves. So just because they've got a different colour skin or they, they may have a different um, religion or they might have a different um, viewpoint, those are the type, kinds of tension points that happen between people groups. Uh, we want to bring friendship festivals together so that people can get to know one another and realise what's good about that other person's culture. What, you know, what can we celebrate and how can we take down those um, points of division? Mm, that's fantastic. Um, and I suppose like you say in many cases um a lot of these problems aren't solved because we don't necessarily listen and so finding the peace like you say is that basically it's getting people together and trying to work out okay what is the problem because i suppose a lot of time lots of problems occur because we don't actually give people the opportunity to say well what's wrong why are you upset and is that the purpose of this yeah so we the first um the first base really is about trying to heal some of the tensions that exist between people because we haven't listened, because we haven't, we've been ignorant really of what that other, per, what it's like to walk in that, that other person's shoes. But I think there we need to then take it on into um, what can we constructively do together? Can we run a project together that addresses something in the community so in the aftermath of the riots the riots you will have seen people will have seen um the whole community coming out to help repair damage that's been done to somebody's property um some of the mosques for example that were damaged in the aftermath of the riots um and then the community came out to clean up the mess if you like and help rebuild what has been broken but I think we then need to help rebuild each other's lives it's not just about physical structures it's about do we know one another what can we do to work together how can we really begin to understand what our prejudices are and how do we begin to overcome those prejudices because we've all got prejudice um we all need to really spend time reflect on self-reflection of what, you know, what makes me angry um, when somebody does something in the community which I don't like, or, you know, my road rage because somebody's cut me up in the car. So we, we need to think about ourselves, self-reflection, how do we get involved with that? And then we hopefully build some projects which gives people um you know, a relational opportunity to work together. That's great. Um, I, sp I suppose a lot of the time is it basically, so you, we bring people together and uh, just give them the opportunity to explain why they're upset and then basically go on to work out, okay, how can we solve this problem and therefore find the peace in their communities? Because like you say, it's not just a physical things are being broken. It's also relationships um, that need to be rebuilt. Trust needs to be rebuilt in many cases. Yeah, trust trust needs to be rebuilt and we we have to get to know one another because it could well be that a group of people that have been prejudiced toward another group of people for example um if they got to know one another they might find that they have a lot of shared interest sport for example 
and those kinds of shared interest is what brings people together around a meaningful activity. So that's why we want to do things like the, the friendship, uh, friendship festivals, but we also want to do projects where people that, who've got a shared interest can work together on something. And that then brings the barriers down between them as they're working together. Yeah, and we've seen so many times sport does sport, for example, does bring people together. We saw it at the Olympics, didn't we? People come together because to they share an interest in a particular sport or a particular type of athletics, and it does bring people together. So, what, what other sort of uh, things might might people have as a shared interest? Well, we we find things like art and you know things of you know art is one of the things a little bit like sport where people who are interested in say theater or drama or they're interested in visual arts or they're interested in um you know what could a community look like they want to they want to design something um to make you know that community to get across their message so art can be a very unifying thing as well or it could be around a theme like for example we were interested in how to um, address the issue of homelessness or the issue of the cost of living crisis or the issue of youth antisocial behaviour. So there's those there's those things like art and sports which can bring people together, but also problem solving around some of those other social issues. Yeah, that's it's great actually because I suppose things like sports or arts or, or perhaps sort of problem solving a particular problem they allow people to put aside their differences and work towards a common goal or a common interest. Yes, that's right. So we've seen that, for example, when we did the the work that we did in Reading with Thames Valley, um, we did a arts competition for young people where we said what would you like your community to look like in three years from now but they had to draw they had to make a graphic or they had to make a piece of art which got across their view um and it was so successful that competition that reading university agreed to put the winning art entries on a mural on the outside wall of the university wow incredible but also because the university wanted to attract young people to come to the university and they really wanted to attract the types of young people who don't see themselves as academic um they wanted to attract people young people who would never see themselves as going to university and because of the art competition a lot of the young people who were involved in in the art competition were not the sorts of young people who had an aspiration to go to university, they ended up going down to the university to see their artwork and then meeting some of the staff and meeting some of the other students. And it's really brought um, a bridge between the community and the university. And so it's those kinds of ideas that we want to explore. Awesome. Well, because that would definitely find the peace because uh, it's building those bridges, like you say, building that trust and um, opening doors, really. It's it's providing a an opportunity for people to go somewhere they maybe weren't comfortable going before or perhaps wouldn't have been wouldn't have been trustworthy enough to go before. Yeah. And maybe lack of confidence, sometimes lack of um, our self-esteem uh, or not really believing that we could have an opportunity there's a lot of young people today who don't feel they've been given that same equality of opportunity as others and we know that a lot of those young people are being attracted to go into uh, to maybe join one of these gangs either you know the far right gangs or things like um you know the county lines um attracting young people to come and join them because the young people don't feel like they have a voice so giving people a voice is a really powerful thing to do mm, that's a good point make giving people a voice uh, i suppose a lot of these projects will give them a voice and it will give them something to work toward uh, a lot of the time i guess a lot of these problems could easily be resolved if people were just allowed to maybe not feel so marginalized and perhaps we're given the opportunity to pursue what they enjoy. 
Yeah, that's right. And, you know, I was on a call the other day with um, um, Northern Ireland, and that's been an area which has experienced a lot of uh, these kinds of um, antagonistic groups toward each other, you know, like the riots, but it's been going on for decades, people that don't agree. Uh, who uh, who are very angry about their lack of agreement toward one another. And one of the people on the call was saying that many of the communities um, are who who've been um, at the center of this um, anger and rioting um, is because they feel forgotten. They feel that they've been overlooked. They feel that their voice hasn't been heard. So it's right through from young people who might feel like that through to communities who feel like that. We haven't had a voice. We haven't been heard. We have been overlooked. There isn't equality in the UK, you know, much as we'd like to say there is. There are lots of communities who have less resource than other communities. Uh, there are lots of people groups that have less, uh, you know, fewer re resources. And that's what sort of causes this anger and disenfranchisement. So really, we want to get to the root of that and say, how can it be that we can heal some of these rifts, but also that communities don't feel forgotten, that communities feel that they, they are being heard? Mm. So I'm just wondering, uh, how could, uh, for example, any person listening, how could we get involved in this initiative? Well, if um, people look up Finding the Peace, it's on the Stewardship Services website. Um, they can find out all about it there, or they can come to Redeeming Our Communities, which is rock.uk.com or they can go to welcomechurches.org. So you can actually find out about it in three different places, which is great. Um, so either at Redeeming Our Communities, at Welcome Churches, or at Stewardship Services. Um, we've shared what how people can get involved, how people could um, donate to the campaign, which is really important because without the donations, we can't, go to, to to help those particular communities because obviously it's going to cost something to bring that bring about that reconciliation and rebuilding so people can go to rock welcome churches or stewardship services awesome uh, and it's, it's great that um this i suppose in a way it allows people to pool resources um and then allow as you say for these resources to then be more evenly distributed more fairly distributed Yes, that's right, because most of the communities which have been um, really adversely affected, over 40 communities, many of those communities haven't got the resource to do the rebuilding, either the physical rebuilding or the more relational building. And we want to go and offer them these resources that we have as Rock and Welcome Churches and that costs money. So we are asking people to donate, but also we're reaching out to communities that might want us to come. You know, they might have a plan of what they'd like to do, but they just need a little bit of help. Mm, absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. So rock.uk.com. Also, yes. Also, I got that right, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, rock.uk.com. Yeah, that you oh. did it because you did it without the www. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Welcomechurches.org. Yeah. And stewardship services. I should know off the top of my head, but I don't. <laughs> but I'm just going to look it up. Stewardshipservice.org.uk. So any combination of those will work. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So that's great. Thanks so much, uh, Deborah, for telling us about this initiative and uh, for giving us an idea of how, how it works and uh, how we can get involved. Yeah, thank you. And a happy birthday to Pure 24-7 Radio as well. I believe it's your first birthday it around is. that now. So happy birthday to all of you and hope you do um, go from strength to strength. Thanks so much, Deborah. It's great to speak to you. All right. Thanks then, Nathan.